Hi, I'm here today to show you how simple and easy it is to use a catheter if you have an Indiana pouch. I've had one now for five years, so I have lots of experience. I've probably, well, I know I've done this process thousands of times. And um, they aren't all the same um, because each day is different and what I eat and drink sometimes differs. But anyway, I wanted to be able to share with you my experience, so maybe uh, it would be easier for you if you're considering getting an Indiana pouch. So with that said, I'd like to zoom in now on, our, on my medical supplies that I use on a daily basis. So here they are. Here's a wet one which you can buy at the store. And I use these because I uh, go to work, you know, five days a week. At home, I just use baby wipes. And here's the lubricant that I use. Here's a gauze pad. And here is the catheter that I use. So I'm going to get started here and show you how I do this process. So what I do is I'll pull down my pants here and I'll show you how to uh, catheterize your stoma if you're going to get an Indiana pouch or thinking about it. Uh, I have like a little t-shirt I wear underneath my shirts lots of times because this will help keep my clothes clean through this process. I'm going to put like a little paper towel here underneath to catch any lubricant that might drip. And so um, I'm going to pull off my dressing here and show you what my stoma looks like in just a minute. And so um, I'm going to take this dressing and I have a very sticky dressing that I use. I'm going to pull off the old gauze. There's a little bit of mucus on there and there's a little bit of blood today, very minor, but you know, occasionally once or twice, once a week maybe I might see a little blood, it's no big deal. I'm going to take this dressing, I'm going to pull it off, and I'm going to stick it over here on the other side of my abdomen. A friend of mine gave me this really great tip to do this, and what this does is when I'm out at work or outside of the home, it keeps the dressing nice and clean, I don't have to worry about it. So, if you look at my stoma here, You'll see it's very flat, flush to the skin, to the surface of the skin. It's about the size of a dime, and it has like a little starburst effect of, of, around the outside of it. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But anyway, um, if she had any mucus on her still, I would take one of these little wipes and wipe her, but she looks okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take my catheter. It looks kind of long and you know this can be real intimidating when you've never done it before and you think how is this going to fit but it does and, and it's not really you know I'm gonna I'm gonna feed it into me probably up to about that point right there so this much is going to feed in and it's really no big deal after you've done it a couple of times so we're gonna take this new catheter I will tell you that I reuse my catheters not everyone does but it works for me but today I'm going to use a new one just to show you what a new one looks like. And uh, some, there's different types. I use a uh, rubber one with a coude tip. That's what this curve tip is. And some people use a straight one. But anyway, um, I personally really like these. Uh, here's my lubricant. I'm going to put on the tip of it. I'm going to insert the catheter into the stoma. Now this stoma... There's no sensitivity there, so it does not hurt to put that catheter in there. I'm going to feed it in there. And if it glides right in, that means it's ready to go, and it also means that I'm relaxed down there in my, with these muscles. If you don't relax these muscles, it's going to be more difficult to be able to catheterize yourself. Uh, if you get it in at the wrong angle, then you just want to pull it out a little bit. Just pull it out just a little bit and start back in again, kind of work it in and out. You can tell if you're not going in uh, correctly, you'll, you'll feel it. So I'm in through the gateway now. There's like a little passageway there you can feel when you're past that. And what that is, is that keeps the urine from coming out of the bladder when you're not ready to take it out. So I'm going to feed it on in here. And we're going to see it's going in very nicely and easily. And we're, there we go. So... Now, it doesn't always happen this perfectly for me, even after five years of experience. Uh, if I uh, am anxious or stressed out about something, 
then these muscles will tighten up through here and it'll be more difficult for me to get the flow of urine started. So when that happens, what I do is I just take, I just deep, have some deep breaths. That's what I do and I think happy thoughts. You just want to be as relaxed as you can with this process. If, if you don't, it just makes it that much more difficult. So uh, what you do is, like I say, stay very positive about it. And it's, I think it's real important to accept your stoma and love your stoma. Accept that it's part of you and it's part of your new lifestyle. And it's going to be this beautiful little stoma. By the way, I have the most beautiful stoma in the entire universe. That's what I tell my stoma all the time. Because this stoma in my bladder, my new bladder that's made from my intestines, is going to be what keeps me alive. And it gives me a great quality of life. So, now, if I think that there's more urine in the pouch, but it's not coming out, what I'm going to do is press gently over here on the other side. You can't always do that in the beginning when you've you have, to, you have to wait several weeks after surgery before you can do that because it will be tender. And uh, sometimes I kind of lean to one side and I may get a little more out of there. As you can see, kind of, you can kind of work it in and out a little bit and, and get more urine out because you want to try to empty the pouch as thoroughly as you can. So there we go. And so I think I'm empty there. I'm going to take this out very carefully here because there's going to be residue that comes out the front there. And I have, uh, I carry with me some paper bags to put this in. We'll put the used catheter in. At home what I do is I put that in a container with some water and I will rewash them. And so then what I want to do is take my little wet one, which I brought with me. I'm going to take this and just wipe around the stoma area here, just very gently, wipe off that extra lube, and just pat gently, just gently on the stoma itself, because I don't want to like scrub it, and uh, if you see here, this is my scar my from my incision, this is my battle scar, that's always going to be with me to some extent, but that's okay, and I'm going to take a little piece of tissue here now, you can use paper towel or tissue and just dry it off a little bit around that area because if you don't get it dry around there, the dressing will not restick its restick. So then I'm going to take my gauze and I'm going to take this dressing off of here. This is very sticky, this dressing. Uh, it's a great dressing to use. And I'm going to put my new gauze there. And if you're going to see, that's going to hold right there because this surface is also sticky. But this allows me to continue to reuse this particular dressing over and over again throughout the day. Because some of these little items can be kind of pricey, even if your insurance is helping you pay for them. So, as I wrap this up, I want to say to you, um, aside from having a good positive attitude, you know, and an acceptance and love for your stoma, you also need to have a sense of humor. Because there are going to be times when things happen. They just happen. Life happens. And, you know, once or twice a year, you know, I'll eat the wrong thing or drink the wrong thing. Or sometimes I don't even know why. And that little stoma will just shoot out like a geyser. Luckily for me, it's, it's always been in a place where, where I wasn't at work anyway. <laughs> so, I'd like to conclude this by saying if you have a desire for more information about the Indiana pouch, uh, I would uh, suggest that you go to my website. I have lots of information about it based on my experience and I have um, also an email, a um, little place there where you can email me with your questions and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have and you will find that at bladdercancerwarrior.com I'd like to thank my daughter for being so patient with me and filming this. She's been great. And my son for being so uh, kind to spend the time to put it on the internet for me. And uh, above all, I'd like to thank God for the blessings that I've received from my struggle with cancer. It's, it's been a tough one, but you know, here I am today. I'm enjoying a great quality of life. I feel so blessed. 
and I just want to share uh, whatever experience I have with others. So uh, with that being said, I say uh, thank you for viewing. I really appreciate your time and attention to this video. Uh, take care and God bless.